I, it's Understand. a harder. I hear it's a harder rock and roll. <laughs> and other things. I'll direct my first question to Senator Tester and the hoverboard. <laughs> <laughs> Having been on for seven seconds, sir, are you sure you didn't order either one of those hoverboards? I I, I wouldn't know how to ride one of those doggone things if I had one, much less two at a time. Well, that's why you remain healthy. <laughs> those things are crazy. Anyways, thank you for the comic relief there. Senator Tester, we needed that. Yes, sir. As I've emphasized in my opening statement, financial fraud and bad actors are not new. Check fraud, for instance, has been around from my perspective forever since we've had checks, it seems like. And yet, surprisingly, despite many of the technological advancements that we've seen uh, in the financial industry, check fraud incidents nearly doubled from 2021 to 2022 and is on pace to increase even more in 2023. Mr. Binda, can you please explain how the majority of check fraud is being conducted today and who check fraud is impacts the most? Uh, thank you for the question, Ranking Member Scott. So check fraud is a big challenge for us today and really it impacts uh, Americans of all types. Uh, the challenge we've got is, and it started with the fact that the mail system isn't nearly as secure as we thought. So we're seeing a huge increase in the theft of mail. Uh, we're seeing um, mail carriers being assaulted so that they could steal the mail as well as steal the arrow keys that are there. Mm. And what this allows the criminals to do is actually gain access to these checks. And unfortunately, the marketplace today allows them access to tools that we didn't even dream of 20 years ago. They have the new, they can access chemicals to wash these checks. They can access card stock from overseas suppliers so they can print checks that look exactly alike. Uh, frankly, it's a very challenging fight for us uh, to try and uh, stop these trends unless we can start securing the mail. So to that point, if someone can literally just steal the check for the mailbox, what should we be doing to educate consumers about check fraud that we're not doing right now? I think there's a lot of efforts underway to, to educate consumers. That's why ABA entered a partnership with the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. Uh, but I think people need to recognize that if you give someone your name, your address, your bank account number, and the bank routing number, you're giving them access to your bank account potentially. And so looking at other more secure forms of payment. Uh, Senator Tester talked about uh, credit cards that may not be viable all the time, but ACH and other forms of payments can be useful ways to transfer money. Thank you. I frequently hear from bankers across the country about their frustration with the government's handling of suspicious activity reports, or SARS, and the effectiveness of our anti-money laundering regime. Bankers spend significant resources filing SARS and FinCEN with FinCEN, which are intended to help catch criminals and prevent abuse within the financial system. But more, than, more often than not, millions of SARS are essentially sent into a black box where banks receive no feedback, and most of which are never acted upon by agency personnel or law enforcement. Again, Mr. Binda, you have spent most of your professional life working in fraud and cybersecurity. Having worked with both law enforcement and financial institutions, do you believe that the current system is working efficiently? I think there are definitely improvements that could be made to the current system. I know there is frustration on the bank sides, uh, and I know there's frustration on the law enforcement side. I think better coordination between law enforcement and private sector, a feedback mechanism, so that banks understand what law enforcement is looking for, so it can provide them the information they need. But then again, law enforcement providing tips and tactics and trends so that banks can better protect their customers from fraud. Right. As I stressed in my opening statement, consumer education is critically important when it comes to preventing or trying to reduce that sort of fraud. It breaks my heart that someone will place a check in their mailbox, assuming they are paying a bill or sending money to their loved one, only to find out that a stranger is taking it. It seems that ABA is working around the clock to figure out ways to protect consumers and help institutions ensure this sort of fraud won't happen again. In fact, ABA has worked to develop a check fraud claim directory that provides contact information for banks to file a check warranty breach claim with another financial institution. Can you walk us through the ins and outs of how this directory works, Mr. Binda, and the importance of it? Uh, so we know this doesn't solve the check fraud problem, but we're trying to do what we can. Uh, one of the challenges banks have is finding out who's the right point of contact to send that claim to so they can get reimbursed for it, so they can provide those funds back to the consumer. But we've taken it further than that. We recognize check fraud is, is happening to all Americans, and we're trying to figure out ways that we can make filing the claims from the customer perspective easier. 
trying to get rid of things such as requiring not notarizations or pay affidavits, trying to make sure that when a decision is made, the customer is reimbursed more quickly. It's a challenge. It's a very complex thing to do, but we are working to try and make this process better for banks and customers alike. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Scott. Uh, Senator Menendez of New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 